neither are. Now Cambridge are. And away we go. Boat race number 141. Second university challenge of the week. Questions this time being asked by Father Thames. And the nerves of eight oarsmen and one cox in each boat. Oxford nearer the camera the Middlesex station, Cambridge further away, and Oxford being warned immediately as they try to hold Cambridge from coming across. So I think uh, Oxford were trying to pull across into the middle stream, they were set, uh, straight over set wide, and Oxford got off those first three strokes a little bit quicker, and they seized a canvas lead. Oxford at 45 plus to Oxford, Cambridge for 44. Good contest down the Fulham reach. And again, a warning to Oxford, and the blades are very, very close. Oxford have pulled away just a little bit. The Cox on the Middlesex station doesn't want to turn too quickly. He wants to hold his opposite number out as long as possible. And certainly, Oxford having to use rudder, it's, it's cost them a few feet. Every time you put the rudder on, it acts like a brake. Cambridge are beginning to settle into their rhythm, and they've turned what was a six-foot deficit into probably about a six-foot lead. It's still very tight with everything to play for at this point. Oxford with the advantage of the Middlesex bend. Goldie were able to negate that advantage that was held by Isis and the blue boat looking at the moment as though it's doing the same. Testing moments for Jeremiah McClanahan and his men. Cambridge definitely with the advantage there. Cox is up with the three man. Level with the three man of Oxford. Cambridge are moving away as we come up to Craven Cottage. Cambridge have really fought through this first uh, minute and a half. They're in fact overrating Oxford slightly, which is a surprise. I think we expected to see Oxford really challenging hard. Cambridge have really pulled out in that second minute. They've got about two thirds of the and they're going to try and counter Oxford's attack, which must come. Oxford have got to try and take advantage of this bend, because after that, it's a long pull up towards Hammersmith and what will be a significant advantage for Cambridge. But they're still wanting contact between half and two-thirds of a lane. Oxford won't want to turn too soon. It's about now. Will the Cox do as Dan Topolsky will be hoping? Well, this is a key, key moment in the race here. I mean, this is absolutely key on this corner. This is our advantage here. Cruz, Cambridge put in a big, big push. They knew they had to hold us on this corner here. Oxford are really trying to push back into this race. They know that they've got to make this move here. And from now on, this is absolutely essential stuff. And actually, I think they're holding now. They have held. Cambridge have gone quite wide just at this stage. And now Oxford are trying to hold and move. But this is very, very crucial. The umpire's warning again. He's having quite a job here because Abby Chapman, maybe only 18 years old, but she's half pushing hard. Well, we said that you would instruct her to do precisely that, but Russell Slapford coming across, and it's only the fact that the seven man on this side is clear of the two man on the far side, that there wasn't a touch then. Dangerous times here, because if they touch, there would be a disqualification or the grave danger of it. They're very, very close together. Once the blades get in this close, it's very difficult to get them apart again without the blades coming in together before they go out again. And they're almost interlocked. It's only inches that are separating them. And it's only because Cambridge do have that advantage. The crew's being asked to move apart by the umpire. This is some scrap. The question is, how much is it taken out of the Oxford crew? Because as Dan said, they really had to fight their bend, and the bend is now running out. And they'll be running up in a more or less parallel line towards to Hammersmith, past Harrods Har Har Depository. They're into Prattery Reach. They're still very close together. And there's really We've passed no the mile post. Sorry, Chris. Sorry, right. There's no, really no change there. The crews are still interlocked. Really, no inch has been given over the last 20 or 30 strokes. Yawning a Thronson. Leading his men. Encouraged by Abby Chapman. The timings at the mile post, just one second in it, 3.50 to 3.51. Some uh, 20 seconds down on the record, but these, as we've said a couple of times already, are not record conditions in any way. 
And I think Oxford are having another real go to try and hold on. They've got now to prepare for a counter-attack by Cambridge. Cambridge being warned. Yes, they certainly haven't been able to get away. Russell Slafford only got up to the, uh, the three-man. And they haven't gone away from there. And important for Russell Slatford that he holds Cambridge out, doesn't turn too early at Hammersmith, which many feel is what happened in the race in 92. I think we, the first part of this Surrey Bend, which is just past the wall of the Harrods Depository, is actually a rather significant one. It's very important for Cambridge's viewpoint to try and push Oxford wide at that point, and then they can cut across the Surrey Bend as they come through Hammersmith Bridge. As they come past Harrods now, they should be trying to edge out. I think Cambridge are actually too close in. They've been like, pushed slightly by Oxford, and perhaps partly by choice, but they're well underneath that Surrey Bank. This is to uh, Oxford's advantage. It will allow them to get a better line as they come into the Hammersmith Bend. But it does look as though uh, they've moved just slightly further ahead as we look back from our camera on the Middlesex side. And there's no doubt about what I just said. They have got away significantly and almost a length, not quite. Well, it's quite amazing. I mean, they have done such a good job to here. I can't tell you how bad I am of them. But they are caught on the outside of the corner here now. Cambridge have really started to move here. This is where it really does count. The conditions change just here. Uh, this is where uh, Russell Slatford is in quite a good position to be able to hold us out as he goes around the corner. It's going to get quite rough uh, as we come into a headwind along the island here. Um, but I'm very, very uh, pleased with the way they've gone so far. It's been very, very exciting. I think Abby Chapman has done a terrific job. She's now tucking in there uh, with the Cambridge puddles underneath her riggers. She knows she's got to stay on the outside, but she's actually doing a very good job there trying to counteract the puddles that are coming down onto the bows of the uh, Cambridge boat, uh, the Oxford boat. Of course, she has to manage to do, Chris Bellew, what Liz Chick did in 92. She's got to come round the outside yes. eventually. I'm not sure whether that's going to be within Oxford's powers. I think this, this Cambridge crew is going to rely on its strength and risen rhythm to stop that happening. This next minute or so of the race could be very important because it's the major part of the Surrey Bend. From Cambridge's point of view, it's very important they get as far away from Oxford as possible because once they're past the St Paul's School complex on the left, the bend actually flattens out considerably, and it could well be that Oxford could start to come back into a contention. So Cambridge will be looking to try and get at least another half a length of clear water. But you can see that the headwind has picked up as they went through Hammersmith Bridge. There's quite a lot of a popple on the water. You can see the waves beginning to break a little bit over the bows of the boat. But it's Cambridge still. Cambridge have got perhaps a length of clear water now. And the time's there for Hammersmith Bridge. Moved up from one second at the mile post to four seconds at Hammersmith Bridge. And Cambridge, who had to withstand the challenge, have managed to uh, keep their rhythm going in spite of that pressure. Hasn't been hurried. It's so important that they relax. Uh, an indication of how difficult the conditions have become. Let's look at the... Uh, water around the Oxford boat. Yeah, the, we just went a little bit wide there, I think. Oxford went a little bit wide on that corner. It might have been a chance to try and cut in inside of Cambridge, because it really got very bouncy, the water here. Uh, but uh, Russell was staying in the fastest stream. Oxford was really instructed to stay in the fastest stream. There was nothing they could do. There was some power there in that Oxford, uh, that Cambridge boat, just as they moved up into the, uh, around the corner through Hammersmith Bridge, and I think that really hurt us. Um, and you can see they're now moving up. They've got about three lengths now, and they're moving. Uh, now Oxford have moved inside them a touch, and they're on the straight above the big, the big bend. But this big bend has hurt, and uh, Cambridge have got that lead now, which uh, they should be able to sustain because they do have a lot of power and a nice rhythm. Oxford, though, have tremendous courage, tremendous heart, and they're going to keep this attack going right the way through to the finish. Well, obviously, with Dan Topolsky, almost on top of the Oxford boat, the uh, excitement coming from him, but I think we should pay due credit to the quality of uh, Cambridge as they came, put in that uh, spurt around Hammersmith and got away then. Absolutely. One can't fault the, the, the Cambridge uh, or the, the Oxford tactics. 
They did everything they could. Oxford have now actually switched inside Cambridge, trying to get calmer water in the hope that they can catch up. Oxford did really everything they could to get on terms with Cambridge. Cambridge have shown just a tiny bit of vulnerability under pressure with their rhythm. No one's actually ever managed to break their rhythm, but Oxford threw everything they could at them. But this situation will suit Cambridge. Although they're, they're marginally lighter on the way in, they have more power man for man than the Oxford crew, and these heavy conditions will actually suit them rather well. They've got a great deal of power. They're about two inches a man taller as well, and length is important in rowing. It's all about the efficient and easy use of levers. And just look at that Cambridge crew now, just letting it surge along into the headwind. The headwind actually helps them steady themselves as they come forward over the top of the waves. You can see the waves breaking along the side of the boat, but it's quite manageable. Earlier in the week, we had waves breaking over the heads of the crew, so this is but a mill pond by comparison. Shorter stroke from uh, Oxford? Yes, it's a, it's a less effective stroke, uh, stroke I think. Uh, physically, it's probably marginally shorter, but what's really important about Cambridge is they actually pick the water up. They put the blade in and immediately start propelling time delay on the Oxford crew, and furthermore, their, their blades are not buried right the way through very often. Quite good finishes at this point. You can see the blade work is still holding together. They're certainly not falling apart. A lot of determination still being shown, but then these crews train very hard indeed. 24 hours a week of actual training, a commitment of up to 40 hours a week, the boat race is involving now. And that's before they do their work. Now let's check. From the uh, helicopter, you can just see uh, Barnes Bridge. And the timings at uh, Chiswick Steps, 10.55, 11.04, difference of nine seconds. So really from approaching Hammersmith Bridge to Chiswick Steps, Cambridge have been slowly but surely and in style increasing their advantage. And they are now in total control. Yes, I think they've, uh, they've weathered the storm and we should now see the, the best possible rowing from them. This is a crew very much in the same scale as the, the last two years. I think the purists would say it's not technically quite as fine as last year's, certainly on the, very much equal to the crew of the year before. A lot of individual talent, but not quite the balance. It's always a question of trying to get the right men in the right order. As we heard earlier, Harry Marne made a uh, last minute change along the stroke side in order to try and improve the flow of rhythm through the boat. Line astern between the two boats and it's become now a question of pride for Oxford and uh, no one would doubt that they have that. But Cambridge now really have taken the better line. The uh, crossing as they come towards Barnes Bridge. Yeah, yeah, we're moving. The boards have moved up really very well now, just uh, just in the last sort of four or five minutes. They've taken the uh, better course. They've got out of the worst of the water on the inside after, after the Hammersmith Bend. And all the way along the island, they just kept a little bit less uh, off the worst of the, of, the, of the rough water. And uh, Oxford tended to stay out a little bit in the, in the middle of it, hoping to pick up some fast, fast water. Uh, the water wasn't there, and now again, uh, Oxford have gone a bit wide here along the bandstand and Cambridge again are picking a better run and they're moving now up to uh, just the, inside of Barnes Bridge with Cambridge using that power at a lower rate now they're moving away very strongly indeed but Oxford you can see from behind here they've kept their blade work really pretty good uh, they're working very very hard through the water a couple of bits higher and still trying to attack blade work good and we've got about four minutes to go as we pass the bandstand here, four minutes to go to the finish. Now, I think the, uh, the combination of putting uh, Miles Barnett, a relatively inexperienced rower at the stroke seat, and backing him at the Cambridge 8 with Mark Ivanovic, an extre extremely experienced Croatian oarsman, has actually worked extremely well. They're producing very, very good rhythm, backed most ably by Matt Parrish, who was moved into the sixth seat only three days ago. It's very sweet indeed now, and everything is going well for them. It's once you've broken clear, suddenly it all becomes easy. There's a, a terrible period in the boat race when you're hung on sort of a three quarters of a length to a length. Breaking clear is very significant, but once you're at two lengths in front, then suddenly the load falls off your shoulders. The stand of the rowing in a funny way seems to get much, much easier. And here they are coming through Barnes Bridge, and now it's less than three minutes to the finish. 
secret always is in any sport. If you seem to be relaxed, if you seem to be doing things at your own time, you're likely to be successful. And in a boat, if you're all doing it together in that same time and relaxed fashion, you will have a good crew. That's the uh, final bend. They'll begin to uh, smell the brewery as they turn past uh, the White Hart, the Mortlake Brewery, further on. It's a very sweet smell and a very sweet rhythm. Cambridge will be looking for the first uh, hat-trick for some 25 years. I know that Richard isn't interested in hat-tricks, but it's also he's the first Cambridge man to win three races also for some 25 years. Look at the expressions on the faces, the grit of the teeth there from Rob Clegg, who for the second year running is going to be in a losing boat. He'll be back next year, absolutely determined to turn things round. Jeremiah McClanahan, it's not going to be the uh, distance of last year in uh, Isis Skuldi, but it's going to be defeat. Enormous crowds lining the towpaths. We've seen bunting and balloons of both colours all the way down. And it's a wonderful sight on really the most delightful spring day. Just check the timings at Barnesbridge. 14.51, 15.04, just all the time Cambridge have been going away, finding the better water, and as a result, Daniel Topolsky is perhaps not jumping up and down quite so much. Well, I'm, it's very, very impressive the way that Oxford's held together in this. They're still at uh, just under 34 into this headwind. They have taken the corners a little bit wide, but they are really maintaining their rhythm. They're maintaining their horizontal drive. Their blades are staying well, well buried, and, uh, and very, very accurate. They've actually closed a little bit just in this last uh, two or three minutes. They seem to have held on a bit better there and moved, uh, moved back a touch. But Cambridge are unassailable now, uh, moving, winding up now for the finish. Uh, we've got a minute or so to go, a minute and a half to go. Uh, but it's been, it was very, very good that first six or seven minutes. We knew we were underdogs. We knew we had a long, long way to go uh, back in September. But it's been, I'm very proud of the way the boys have come forward and come through just in these last, uh, these last five or six weeks. And I'm sure Robin Williams will be feeling exactly the same about his crew. One or two began to express a few doubts. I don't think that he at any stage uh, shared them. Can I just say something? Uh, very, very impressed with Cambridge, actually. They've held themselves together very well. He's had a very, very good squad. And just watching them all the way through the year, they've been very impressive. So all credit to Robin on his first year as coach. And he's going to take the victory as Cambridge come home. Richard Phelps said that he would be accountable for the boat's performance. How good it is, is a reflection of Robin's ability as coach. Oxford finishing well down, and I would have thought that both Phelps and Williams can be very happy with their contributions. I, I think they certainly can. It was, a, it was a very gritty row on behalf of both crews. It was well fought. We actually saw a real struggle, which perhaps was something we didn't see so much of last year. Oxford by no means disgraced. A first-class victory from Cambridge by about four lengths, I'd say and uh, they have done everything that was asked of them. Finishing times. Cambridge at uh, 18.04. Oxford at 18.16. So Oxford did close up a second at the finish. Difference between the two crews, 13 seconds.